I went to the president, and I said, I want to be in television. He said, what do you want me? We have no opening. Was this Lefkowitz? Yeah. I said, he said, we want, I said, we, he said, we have no opening. I said, well, that's your job. You're going to find an opening. That's where I want to be. And somehow I convinced him. So they created a job, which didn't exist. And I then became the assistant to the head of the television department, whose name was Wally Jordan, a terrific man. But there was no job. So if Wally Jordan wasn't looking, I'd take a paper off his desk and try to do something with it. He wouldn't give me any assignments. So there was nothing to do but to steal some idea and go try to do something with it. So I had this innocuous job. There was no job. But I would be sitting in the private rooms, and I would be hearing a lot. And I was learning. And wherever somebody needed some help, they would ask me to help. And then they decided to change the agent who was covering ABC. And he was no longer going to be with the company. And I heard about it, and I wanted the job. And it became a little bit of a battle internally. Some people wanted a guy who was vice president of one of the networks, and some people wanted me. I didn't know if the people who wanted me really thought I was the guy or that I would be less of a threat than the other guy was. But I didn't care. So it became an internal struggle. Somehow I won out, and I was given ABC to cover. And it was the day, the era, when Ed Sherrick was in charge of programming. He had Doug Kramer, his number two man, and the third guy was Len Goldberg. Len Goldberg had an office with no window, and I was probably the only one in town who would talk to him because I couldn't talk to any more important guys yet. And with Len Goldberg, we put together the Patty Duke show. So I said, now I really sold the show. And I started to see the benefits, really see the benefits of selling shows to the networks.